patient should be identified using two methods. Compare information with the CMRMR, check the name and identification number on the patient's identification band, ask the patient to state his or her name and birth date based on facility policy. If the patient cannot identify him or herself, verify the patient's ID with a staff member who knows the patient for the second source. Okay, so when we actually kind of do this next week, up to this point is standard just pretty much for every medication. So we won't be drilling that because I want the focus to really kind of be on get, you getting the skill down, okay? So when we're tested, will <coughs> we be tested on that first part? No, not the skill down. Okay. All right. But, you know, I'll have that expectation when you're in the clinical area that you're doing all those things to make sure we get the right meds at the right person at the right time, all the rest of it, okay? All right. Yeah, computerized yes. medical record or okay. MS work. So, you know, we'll start here by verifying the patient, okay? So, close the door to the room or pull the bedside curtain, complete necessary assessments before administering medications, check the patient's allergy bracelet or ask the patient about allergies, explain the purpose and action of the medication to the patient. Now, uh, one thing is e even if um, he doesn't have an allergy bracelet on, at, double check if he has any allergies. Um, scan the patient's barcode on the ID band if required. Assess IV site for presence of inflammation or infiltration. If IV infusion... Okay, so I'm checking to see if there's any redness, swelling, any signs of infiltration, any pain. Looking above the catheter where it ends, that site, to make sure that there isn't any redness, swelling, pain. If IV infusion is being administered via an infusion pump, pause the pump. Put on clean gloves, select injection port on tubing that is closest to venue puncture site, clean port with antimicrobial swab. Uncap syringe, steady port with your non-dominant hand while inserting syringe into center of port. Move your non-dominant hand to the section of IV tubing just above the injection port. Fold the tubing between your fingers. I'm clamping it because it's going to an IV, okay? But well, I don't want this going backwards. Pull back slightly on the plunger just until blood appears in tubing. Okay, okay so I'll be seeing that here. Inject the medication at the recommended rate. Okay, so you would have done that calculation, right? Mm -hmm. And so always, you always need, that's okay. Um, so you'll always want to know, especially with an IV rate. The la a larger syringe, there's less pressure. And uh, so some people like to um, dilute the medication, particularly if it's a very small amount if it's possible to dilute it in a larger volume or to give it in a larger syringe. Okay, so we'll assume we'll push all of this in. Release the tubing, remove the syringe, do not recap the used needle if used. Engage the safety shield or needle guard if present. Release the tubing and allow the IV fluid to flow. Discard the needle and syringe in the appropriate receptacle. Right. Okay, so. A lot of them, you won't actually have a syringe on the end um, because it's a needleless system. Okay, but if it is, then you would, you know, do the needleless release, put it in a sharp container. So if there's an IV already running and there's no problem with it running, and the IV site looks okay, you don't need to do the flush before your med. Un unlike if it's in a saline lock, nothing is running, and so you can't really be sure it's still in the vessel, so that's when you need to do the flush first, okay? So is there anything else on it that? It just said mm -hmm. check IV fluid infusion rate and, and restart the infusion the pump if appropriate. Then the rest is just general stuff to document, evaluate response, wash your hands. Okay. So any questions about that? Pretty straightforward. Um, you just leave the port like that, and right because you're going to clean it off the next time you do something. Oh, okay. <laughs>
and it, it has a seal on it. So you can leave that open. And we don't worry about flushing it with the IV push. We don't worry about flushing the tube. Correct. As long as your IV has been running okay, and there's no signs of infiltration here, because when you do the push, that's really what you're looking for. That when fluid's going in, if there's any problem. Okay. All right.